Windows 11 was just announced yesterday, and we're gonna talk about all the new features and if you should upgrade now or if you should wait. Before that, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and becoming part of the E-Rock on Deck community. We would absolutely love to have you. Okay, so what exactly is Windows 11 and what are some of the new features? Well, Windows 11 is the new operating system from Microsoft, and in all honesty, it's basically Windows 10 with a brand new skin and quite a few new features. Honestly, the first two things you're gonna notice about Windows 11 right off the bat is that the taskbar is now centered in the middle of the screen, which I think is awesome. I already have my Windows 10 taskbar centered this way. But in addition to that, you're gonna notice a whole new design. Windows 11 looks way more modern, it's way more clean, it has rounded edges. It's definitely giving off more of a transparent slash glass house type of vibe. And honestly, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks, but the big question is, how does it perform? Well, one of the new features, and honestly, probably my favorite feature, is the new snapping capabilities. Windows 10 already allows you to put Windows side by side, so it's not actually a new concept, but they made the concept way more intuitive, and they gave you more options. For example, you can now use more than just two applications to stack side by side in a vertical mode, or you can stick with two applications and do a more horizontal mode and do one application on top of the other. Again, I think this is way more intuitive and I think it's a massive step in the right direction. My only gripe about this is that Windows 11 really seems like an extension to Windows 10. So I wonder why some of the new features like the new snapping capabilities aren't already available within Windows 10. I'm not sure why we need a whole new operating system just to do this. Another big feature they keep talking about is the widgets capability. So now you can actually slide over from the left hand side and you're gonna have a list of all of your widgets and then you can actually go deeper inside of that window if that's what you want to do. Now this is pretty cool, but it's nothing new. We've seen this before with iPhone and Android. And on top of that, it really seems like it's meant for a tablet. It doesn't really seem like it's meant for a desktop computer. Windows 11 is designed for any device. It's meant to be used on a tablet, a computer, a laptop, a two-in-one, a phone, whatever. And this is great from a usability standpoint because if you're working on a tablet with Windows 11, and then you go to your desktop and you start using Windows 11, it's going to be the exact same experience with little to no differences at all. And that's awesome from a user perspective. The only problem I have with this is that you saw very little computers inside of the promotional material and you saw a whole lot of tablets. The only computers you did see were laptop oriented and a lot of those are two in ones with touch screens so they can actually operate like tablets. But what about the traditional computer? That's something that I'm a little bit worried about. Another big addition to Windows 11 is Teams is installed by default. So Teams overall is a really cool application, but it's typically meant to be used in the workplace. As I mentioned in my last video, I work in IT and we use Teams all the time at my company. And so now when I come home from work and I see the Teams application, I'm not gonna think family and friends, I'm gonna think work. But the thing that I keep scratching my head about is, Microsoft owns Skype. And in fact, they purchased Skype for about $8 billion, I believe. Why would you buy a piece of software like Skype for $8 billion and then not make it your default FaceTime application? That is something I just don't understand at all. Another feature that I think is actually pretty cool and I think a lot of people will benefit from is the ability to connect an external monitor to a Windows 11 laptop and then when you disconnect and reconnect you will pick up exactly where you left off. Now I know this may not sound like a big deal but if you actually see it in practice it's actually pretty cool. To my understanding right now when you're using a Windows 10 laptop with an external monitor the moment you disconnect it and plug it back in you do not see your application applications on the second monitor. Rather, you're only gonna see your wallpaper. And so now you're gonna be able to pick up exactly where you left off, and honestly, I could see this being a game changer for a lot of people. Okay, just a couple of features left to talk about. So first and foremost, the Windows Store got a massive upgrade. It's a complete redesign, and they're now gonna be much more developer friendly. But in addition to that, they're taking the store to the next level. Because now, on the Windows Store, you're gonna have the Amazon Store, within the Windows Store. The Amazon Store will now be an application that you can download and from there, you can launch that application and access native Android apps on your Windows device. 
How cool is that? One example they showed of a native Android application running on Windows 11 was TikTok. For those of you who may not know, the TikTok application on Windows 10 right now, honestly, kind of, it kind of sucks. But now you can get the native experience. So if you're an Android user and you're used to using the app and then you switch over to your Windows 11 device, it's going to be the exact same experience with no differences at all. The main issue that I think most people have with this is that it's application inception. Basically, you're having to use the Windows Store, which is an application, to access the Amazon Store, which is another application, to now access all of the Android applications within that application. It's, it's a little confusing. And you know we gotta save the best for last. Around here we do PC gaming, and so we need to talk about the gaming benefits you're gonna get with Windows 11. So for Windows 11, there are three main benefits that they talked about in the presentation. And the first one is faster loading times in all of your games using the existing solid state drives that you already have in your system. It's basically called direct access storage or something like that. It's a feature that they introduced with the Xbox Series X, and now they're bringing it to Windows 11 PCs. And honestly, I think that's pretty cool, right? The faster you can load a game, the better, and I think that's awesome. Another feature that they briefly talked about was DirectX 12 Ultimate. So essentially, it's gonna be a way that developers can give you better graphics with new games. And I don't know, it may actually apply to existing games. I'm not really sure how all of that works, but the short version is you're going to get better graphics on your PC if you have Windows 11. The last major benefit they talked about was auto HDR. And honestly, I think this is gonna be pretty awesome. I know some people are gonna have some issues with it because after all, it's a really taxing feature that's gonna be turned on automatically in the background. And of course, as a gamer, you're gonna care about your frame rate and this could impact your frame rate. You're gonna have to be mindful because this is gonna be a very taxing feature that will automatically be turned on in the background. And if your hardware can't handle it, it will drastically tank your frame rate in your video games. So you're gonna have to pay attention to that. But outside of that, assuming you have really good hardware and you even have a monitor that can support HDR, I think this is an awesome feature and I'm super excited that they're bringing it to Windows 11. Oh, and I guess one other small benefit they talked about was Game Pass is now gonna be integrated into the Xbox app. So currently on Windows 10, there's an Xbox app and there's a Game Pass app. And with Windows 11, they're merging those two together. So now you only have to have one application for everything Xbox related. In terms of a release date right now, they're just talking about holiday 2021, but obviously that could be delayed. But as of next week, June 28, Eighth, you can actually get your hands on a Windows 11 beta. So that's pretty cool. I think you have to sign up for the Insider program if you want that though. But now it's time to address the elephant in the room. Should you upgrade, why or why not? Eventually, you will be forced to upgrade as they continue to support Windows 10 less and less. And even sooner than that, it will be a good idea to upgrade simply because the build will be stable and it will offer you a lot of new features. But early on, right when the operating system releases, you should not rush to upgrade. New operating systems typically lack a lot of driver support, they're buggy, and they have a whole lot of pitfalls that they were not able to catch during beta testing. My personal recommendation, let Windows 11 come out, give it about six months, and then upgrade. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. It goes a long way in helping me out. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and becoming part of the E-Rock on Deck community. We would absolutely love to have you. And until next time, E-Rock out. From, and we are going to bless somebody this holiday season. We're gonna do it. And when we do it, it's gonna be a big video. It's gonna be on the channel. It's gonna be from E-Rock Nation. Everybody's gonna know us coming right here from this Twitch community, Synth Jeffrey, Spank, uh, Flock, Gamers and Techies, everyone else who subscribes. Like, that's what it's gonna be, guys. 